October 10, 1980. Somebody murders a 26-year-old rookie cab driver named Walter Butkowitz. Police arrest two men. The first defendant, David Coleman, is acquitted. Then the second man, John Evans, goes on trial. The star witness, the first man, David Coleman, who now admits on the stand that he is indeed the murderer. So the jury acquits John Evans. <laughs> Under the Constitution, Coleman can't be tried again, despite his confession. So today, both men are free of the charge of murder. To say that he got away with murder is indeed, at this point, a, a fact. I think we also have to recognize that he manipulated the system. But the defense attorney defends the system, based on the premise that no one can be tried twice for the same crime. The state should only be allowed to have one bite at the apple. The idea that they can keep coming back would traumatize and torment people and is clearly unfair. That is the constitutional theory taught here at Harvard Law School and around the country. Part of the price of liberty, part of the price of the Bill of Rights, is an occasional mistake, and if we're going to make a mistake, an occasional mistake on the side of freeing the guilty rather than convicting the innocent. Professor Dershowitz says the Coleman acquittal was a mistake, and the victim's father calls it a travesty. But despite outcries of injustice, even the prosecutor who lost the case says he wants to preserve the system. I'm just not willing to sub suspend the Bill of Rights and operate in the sewer like David Coleman does. But even though he can't be tried again in this courtroom for murder, David Coleman faces another kind of jeopardy just as serious. Prosecutors are looking at what he said here to try to indict him for perjury. If they succeed and convict him, the same confession that outraged so many people will have been turned against him. And ironically, the penalty for perjury in a murder case in this state can be the same as for the murder itself. Life in prison. John Martin, ABC News. Boston.